Okay, you guys, so this is problem 28 from chapter 4 from the section on special cases, no voltage, special cases. So, first let's describe the, um, what this circuit is. We have two ohms connected together with a 20 ohm resistor, and then up here we have a current control voltage source, um, and that's connected over here to a voltage control current source. And here we have 80 ohms, 441, and a 20 volt independent voltage source right here. And we want to find what is the power generated or dissipated by that 20 volt voltage source. So the special condition that um, we're supposed to learn in this lesson is, um, is about um, supernodes. Whenever you have a voltage source, that um, connects two nodes, that's a super node, and you can bypass it, and you can just write your nodal equation here, immediately jump up here and continue writing your uh, nodal equation. And, the re and to illustrate why that works, I'm going to pretend that we didn't see it, and then show you that because the current here, leaving here, enters this node, when you add the two equations, the current will go away. And that's why the concept of a supernode works. But we're going to demonstrate why supernodes work by pretending we didn't see it and then proving that it does work. So first, let's identify all the nodes, essential nodes, in this problem. And remember, an essential node is a node that connects three or more um, circuit elements. So here we have one, two, three. That's one essential node. One, two, three. That's the second essential node. 1, 2, 3, this is the third essential node. 1, 2, 3, this is the fourth essential node. And this is the fifth essential node. Um, so, if we immediately know that's about superposition or we see it immediately, then we know that one node is a super node and we really have four nodes to work with. But, and then, of course, we need to choose one more node. This is one node, the ground node, connects 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we want to choose the node with the most circuit elements to be the ground. That's this one. And since I know this voltage drop right here, I'm going to choose that to be my ground. So now, let's just go ahead and start labeling where our unknown voltages are. I don't know what that is. I'm going to call this VA. I know what this is. This is 20. I don't know what that is, so I'm going to call that VB. I don't know what that is, so I'm going to call that VC. And this, I don't know what this is either, so I'm going to call that ABC. Actually, there's some things that I forgot to label. Plus V delta and minus. All right, so how did I... Oh. That's why I'm confusing myself, because I drew this diagram wrong. Okay. The circuit element ends here. That's why I was like, I thought when I did this problem, I only have three nodes that I didn't know. So V, C. So that's one node that connects four circuit elements. This still has the most nodes connected, and this is still what we're going to choose for a ground. All right, so now that I've unconfused myself, Let's start writing uh, nodal equations. And of course, whenever you have dependent current, in this case, we have a dependent current source. And we also have, um, I forgot one more thing. The current through the 40 ohm resistor is I phi. Um, so this current is controlled by the voltage drop across the 1 ohm resistor. This voltage is controlled by the current through the 40 ohm resistor. OK. So now, since we have two dependencies, that means we'll have two constraint equations. So um, let's write our constraint equations first so that we don't forget about it. So constraint equation number one is going to be this constraint equation right here, the V delta. So I know V delta goes from positive to negative in this direction, so it's going down. This is the higher voltage, this is the lower voltage. So I know that 20 volts, if I take away, so I know that 20 VB, right, 
is going to be the higher voltage, which is 20 volts, minus V delta. That's going to be my constraint equation number one. And by the way, you guys, the hardest thing that I had in doing this problem is actually the plus, the little plus, and the minus errors, um, and the coefficients, managing the coefficients, since I ended up with six equations, six unknowns. So when you do this problem, you have to be very careful because we're dealing with so many variables. And um, I just had to triple check myself, and then I find, oh, that should have been a plus instead of a minus, or um, this should have been, I forgot, this coefficient here. So just be very careful. So that's one constraint equation is uh, V delta. So this, the second constraint equation is going to come from the current through the 40 ohm resistor. So I sub P is going to be VB over 40. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to start writing equations here. Remember, node voltage equations are K, an application of KCL. Nodes out of the current, um, the sum of the nodes leaving, the sum of the currents leaving a node equals zero. So this current, this current, and this current must equal zero. I don't know what that current is, so I'm just going to call it I sub x. So let's start with this one. So that's going to say I sub x plus VA minus 20 over 2 plus VA over 20, that's got to equal to 0. That's my KCL number, um, equation number 1. Now, for the sake of illustrating um, super, or super nodes, I'm going to go over here and write this normal equation here. So, let's go ahead and write this, and this is going to be, I don't know what this is, so, so remember, this is some of the the, no, or the currents leaving the node must equal zero, right? So this, remember I have, I called this I sub x, and it's going into that node. So that tells me that should be negative I sub x, and plus Vc minus Vb, that's over 4, plus Vc over 80, plus this current here, which is 3.125 V delta. So I have two equations. Now I can add them together. And notice when I add them together, the I sub x's go away. I have plus I sub x minus I sub x. So now I have VA minus 20 over 2 plus VA minus over 20 plus VC minus VB over 4 plus VC over 80 plus 3.125 V delta is equal to 0. So now I have one equation and my I sub x goes away. So this is in the case that I didn't see, it wasn't obvious to me about the concept of supernodes. Now here's the advantage and here's why this super, um, knowing that and being cognizant of that will help you in exam. If you immediately knew that, and you said, oh, I have two nodes, they're connected by a voltage, that's a super node, and I can just start writing my equation here, and jumping here, look how much time you save. You start writing your equation, you're going to ignore the current leaving the, the part that goes into the super node, knowing that it'll enter the other end of the super node. So here, you're going to take that current, that's going to be VA, minus 20 over 2 plus VA over 20. Now, you are a very smart person. You say, aha, this is a super node. So now I'm just going to jump over here and continue writing my equations. So VC minus VB, that's over 4, plus VC over 80 plus 3.125 V delta is equal to zero. So here is student number one that didn't immediately see that. Let's check. We got the there, check. That's the same term. V over 20, Vc minus Vb over 4, Vc over 80 plus V 3.125. So student A, who didn't recognize that there was a supernode, 
wrote two equations, arrived at the exact same conclusion as student B, who did this problem faster with fewer um, errors, and got the same equation, and um, saved five minutes on exam. So the less math you have to, have to do, the more accurate and the more points you'll score on your test. So be sure to look for supernodes and realize that because this current is going to enter the other end, I can completely ignore it. I'm only going to write current equations for the branches not connected by the supernode. So a current here, a current here, immediately I'm going to jump to the other end of the supernode. A current here, a current here, and a current there. But that is why they work. They work because you can add them together and they are the unknown current will cancel each other out. That's the reasoning behind it. So now I have one equation. Actually, I have three equations, and I'm going to rewrite this, and you'll see why I will rewrite this later. It has to do with matrices. I'm going to put all variables, write all equations, variables on one side, and constants on the other. So this VB equals 20 minus V delta. I'm going to rewrite as VB plus V delta is equal to 20. Okay, the places where I made mistakes were when I did that in my head and I would forget to account, account for a plus or a minus or a constant. So I'm going to try not to do things in my head so much. And then this one, I fee, is equal to VB over 40. I'm going to rewrite as I fee minus VB. 140th VB, or actually plus negative 140 VB is equal to zero. You can kind of see that I'm setting this up for a matrix, which I absolutely am. And then this one, um, we need to rewrite as well. So, um, because I need board space. So VA, this one is going to be VA, all my coefficients are one half there's one right there, plus 120th. Let's go through. And I don't have any other VA. This was the place where I kept missing coefficients. So guys, be really careful. Plus VB. VB is right here. So I have negative 1 fourth. And then plus, I have a two VCs. One VC here and one VC here. So VC times one fourth plus one eightieth, and then I have a v delta and um, plus v delta, and that has three point one two five. Okay, and then I also have constants. I have one constant here. This is negative 10. It will go on the other side of the equation as positive 10. So all that is going to equal 10. And before I continue, since this problem was so heinous, I'm going to double check. So this one is VB, V delta, and 20, correct? I fee um, VB, zero, correct, and one half, one twentieth, negative one fourth, one fourth plus one eighty, okay. So, so far so good. I really hate when I make mistakes and then I have to go back and correct in the comments because that really confuses people and I really don't like to confuse people. So that's, so now, right now we have three equations and we have one, two, three, four, uh, five unknowns. We need to come up with two more equations. So we wrote an equation here. Or, uh, so now we're going to write an equation here. So remember that um, KCL is, of course, um, the sum of the currents away from a node. I don't know what this current is, so I use I spec. So I'm going to call this I sub Y. No idea what it is. So now this we're going to say is... Um, Start with KCL, so we got to go 20 minus VA over uh, um, 2, that's that branch current, plus I sub Y, that's that branch current, and, pull, and this current here, which is 20 minus VB 
that's equal to um, 20 minus VB over 1, so that's going to be equal to 0. Now over there, we're going to group coefficients because again, we're going to use a matrix. So VA, I have negative 1 half coefficient over here, plus VB, um, I have a negative 1 coefficient here, um, and the uh, final variable I have is uh, at IY plus IY, which has one coefficient, and constants. I have a constant here, 20 over 2, which is 10. I have a constant here, which is 20 over 1, which is 20. 20 plus 10 is 30, and it will come over on this side as negative 30. Alright, so now I have four equations and um, four equations and six unknowns. So I need two more equations. So I'm going to write a nodal equation there. So node voltage at VB. So we've got VB minus 20 over 1. That's that branch current. And then plus VB over 40. That's the isophy branch current. Plus VB minus VC over 4 is equal to 0. That's that branch current. So now let's again group our uh, coefficients. I have a coefficient at VB, a variable, so I've got 1 here, plus 140 here, plus 1 fourth. So I've got 1 plus 140 plus 1 fourth. The next variable I have is VC. So that's going to be plus VC, and its coefficient is negative 1 fourth. And then I have constants. So I have constants. I have one constant here, negative 20, which will come over here on this side as positive 20. Now, I'm going to take a second to check my work so I don't confuse y'all. Um, so VA, negative 1 half. Hi, Y. Um, so negative one half, negative one and one is negative thirty. Um, one plus one forty plus one fourth, negative one fourth and positive twenty. Okay, so now I have one, two, three, four, five equations and six unknowns. I just need one more equation in order to um, to solve to everything that final equation is going to come at no voltage at VC. So, no voltage at VC. That is my no voltage at VC. Actually, do I have enough? I have one, two, three. VA, VB, VC is three equations. Um, V A, V B, V C, I V, and V delta, and I Y. Hang on, you guys. We combine that. So, okay, so I have one, two, V A, V B. So I have, um, I have that equation. was actually part of the superposition node. My sixth equation is actually going to come from this constraint equation. Um, hang on, you guys. Plus I phi. Right, okay. We had a third constraint equation, which I completely spaced off at the very beginning. Good thing I solved these ahead of time. Like six equations and six unknowns. 
are very hard to uh, manage. So we define we define the I phi and the V delta. We forgot to I forgot to write the constraint equation for that, and that's what um, we need. The sixth equation is going to come from. So we have high voltage um, high. It goes from plus to minus. So the voltage drop occurs from left to right. So what we can say is that VC, this is the final destination, VC, then it's going to be the higher voltage and then minus the voltage drop. So it should be VA minus um, 35 I sub P. So again, we're going to rewrite that as VA. Um, let's keep the VC. So we're going to go negative VA, meaning I'm going to bring everything this side over here. So negative VA plus the VC minus 35 I P. Okay. So let's put this down here because all that is getting very junky. So we're going to go negative VA plus VC minus 35 I P. That's equal to zero. And um, negative one VA VC and 35 plus, see, I'm glad I worked this out in advance. So when I brought this over, as you can see, I forgot the plus, and those things were what were killing me. So just little pluses, little minuses, little coefficients, that was what really killed me with this problem. And constraint equations, and so, okay. So now we are going to set up a matrix. Okay, so we... We're going to write out all of our variables. V A, V B, V C, V delta, and um, I sub P and I sub Y is equal to. So let's just take a look at this one equation at a time. And I'm going to match it to the matrix that I did because then I can cross check it. Um, so the first equation that I put in my matrix is actually this one. So let's put things in here. So this equation here is the first line of my matrix. How many VAs do I have in that equation? Zero. How many VBs do I have? I have 1 plus 140 plus 140. That's how many v VBs I have. VCs I have is negative 1 4. I have no V deltas, no IPs, no uh, IYs, and I have all that is equal to 20. That's the first line of the matrix. And then the second one that I put is this one. So let's go ahead and put this. And the reason I'm matching that with my handwritten stuff is because this problem makes it really easy to make mistakes, so I want to be able to cross-check myself. So how many VAs do I have there? I have 1 half plus 1 20. And I've got, as far as VBs, I've got negative 1 fourth VB. VCs, I have 1 fourth plus 1 80th. And V deltas, I have 3.125. I have no IPs, I have no IYs, and I have 10 in a constant. That's the second equation. So now I can erase that. And then the third line is VB, V delta. This is my third line. So let's put that in there. So in that equation, I have no VAs. I have one VB, and I have zero VC. 1 V delta, um, no I Fs, no I Ys, and 20 for my constant. So now I'm done with my that equation. Okay, and the next one is in my, okay, so this is my next line. So the order in which you put this into your matrix obviously doesn't matter at all. I just want to emphasize that in case people think that the order matters. It only matters to me because I don't like to make mistakes in my videos. 
So I want to be able to cross check to the work that I already did. And when I swap lines around, it makes it hard to follow for me. So in that equation, I have no I A. I have negative 140 I, I VBs. And no VC, no V delta, no I, oh, one I C. Um, zero I Y and zero constant. So, double checking myself. Okay. So now we're done with that one. And this one is my fifth line. So I have a negative one VA, negative one VA, zero VB, one VC, no V deltas, and 35 IP, zero IY, and zero for constant. And this one is the last one on our matrix. I have negative one half VA, um, negative one VB, um, zero VC, zero V delta, zero IP, one IY, negative negative 30 for my constant. Okay, I'm gonna check to make sure that you can see the whole thing. And I'm glad I did because I can't quite see it. Okay. Sorry guys, I don't really, beggars can't be choosy, so I don't really have what the best of the equipment or anything. Just using a school library. Okay, can you guys see that? Okay, so that is. All right, there we go. Okay, so now we have this matrix, and I'm going to, as a last final check, calculate it on my calculator, make sure that I come up with the right answer, and make sure there's no mistakes on my matrix or my video. So, you go to your Simultaneous equation solver. So we're going to go applications, new, six equations, and six unknowns. First line coefficients are 1, or 0, 1 plus 140 plus 1 fourth. Negative 1 fourth. Okay, 0, 0, 0, and 20. Line 2 of my matrix. 1 half plus 1 twentieth, um, negative 1 fourth, 1 fourth plus 1 eightieth, 3.125, 0, 0, 10. Okay, third line of the equation is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 20. Fourth line is 0, negative 1 fortieth, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Fifth line is negative 1, 0, 1, 0, 35, 0, 0. Final line of my matrix is negative 1 half, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, negative 30. And here's another challenge of this problem. Just typing in the darn matrix into here. Your calculator requires being very careful. Okay, luckily, I got the correct answers, so I don't have to feel bad when someone makes a comment that, oh, I made a mistake here, I made a mistake there, then I feel bad. So we have VA is equal to negative 20.25 20 volts. VB, VB is equal to 10 volts. VC is equal to negative 29 volts. V delta is equal to 10 volts. Um, IP is equal to 0.25 amps. And I, um, Y is equal to negative 30.125 amps. So we found a whole bunch of information that we weren't looking for, but we found it because we're awesome. The only thing that we really needed out of all this information was I1. Because ultimately what we're looking for is P of um, the power generated or generated or 
uh, dissipated or developed by the 20 volts, volt independent voltage source. And that is V um, I Y, right? The current that's going through it. So I know what V is, that's 20. I Y then is negative 30.125 amps. So that tells me the power associated with the 20 voltage, 20 volts independent voltage source is 30 times negative 30.125, negative 30.125 amps is 20 times negative 30.125 is negative, negative 602.5 watts. So negative watts means power, the voltage source is generating power. So um, that's the answer, negative 602.5 watts, or the other way to say that is 602.5 watts generating. Okay, you guys, um, remember to share the video, um, like it if you learned something from it, and um, make sure to like the Facebook and um, help, help others. That's the main thing, help others. Um, because, why? Because this was a heinous problem, so you should do it because I went through it. Help others because I went through a heinous problem for you. Go Bulls!